page that shows this stands for Indian Dodisal State Tolerant Tolerant Polymer Agro Polyacrylic Shell Electrophoresis. Um, uh, S is used for protein vary with size. Polyacrylic is the color which forms polymer genes to make the gel. Very similar to animals, but it's like different. So this is the polyacrylic gel and tunnels within the gel that the protein would go through to separate the gas distances. So to separate the proteins by their size, you have to taint them with SDS. Because before it is tainted with SDS, usually proteins are coiled and have mixed charges. So as you can see, it's positive and negative everywhere and it's like really coiled up. So well, after SDS, it just linearizes and the SDS will supply the negative charge to the proteins. So they're all negative. So larger molecules move slower to the gel than the, the smaller molecules. Than the smaller molecules. SDS page movement. Okay, so tunnels are formed in the page shell, as I said before. And so the tunnels vary in size and diameter, and they celebrate the mo molecules when they travel through the gel. So basically, uh, like the, since there's like a bigger tunnel, uh, the bigger proteins, which are called the fat proteins, will move through that tunnel and will not be able to smooth through the small ones. While the small ones will, will move in every tunnel. So you will get a large concentration of big proteins on these tunnels, and little proteins because they can move everywhere and only little proteins would be able to go through there so that's how they separate and the way they separate and move in the gel is by using charges since they have a negative charge you would have a positive charge at this side and so all the proteins will move from here and through the gels to the positive area so the, the pink strands are the denatured proteins varying in sizes so as you can see the larger ones go through the like, larger tunnels and the little ones go through the little are, are everywhere, and you don't ever see the larger ones to the smaller ones. And they're separated by their size. As they travel. So this is basically a summary of SDS page. So that you coat you coat the proteins in SDS, then place the mixture of proteins in the CLA electric field, and then they are separated from decreasing size from largest at the top to the smallest at the bottom. Okay, results of these. The first link shows the marker size for proteins. So again, this is the markers, and these are kilodeltons. So the proteins are divided by molecular weight, and the, the small samples are at the bottom and the largest at the top. And the, mole the markers work the same way as they do in agro. So if you want to find the size of this one, you just look between the markers. So this would be about 60 kilodeltons. So. Uh, this is an SDS page. Okay. This is a picture of SDS page after it's mixed. So, in order to get it this color, the gel can be stained with Kamasi blue to visualize the protein map, and then it's de-stained to make the gel clear. And so, this again, this is, these are markers, and these are the samples, and then you could tell the size of the of the proteins by looking at the markers. So, the thing that gives it the blue color is Kamasi blue, which is stained, which is what the gel is stained with after. The process is done. SDS page error. And SDS page errors can occur when too much SDS has been added to the protein and it makes it heavier and the results become wrong because if they're too heavy they won't move through the shell. And that's why there's like ways to there's specific ways to denature proteins in order to minimize the error. Okay, agro SDS page. So Agarose is used for nucleic acids such as DNA and RNA, and they separate by charge, size, and conformation. Uses electric charge to separate these molecules, and gel is made from an agar red seaweed extract. SDS page also uses electric charge, but just separates proteins, and only by size. And the gel is made from a polyacrylamide powder that is usually purchased again because it's really dangerous. Why? Bonding is used to transfer the samples from the gel onto a membrane, such as a nylon membrane or nitrocellulose membrane. Nylon membrane is for DNA and RNA, and nitrocellulose is for the proteins. Uh, and they're analyzed through probing, or, or with nuclear probes, or antibiotic probes to further analyze. Okay, types of blotting and their creators. 
Southern Blatt was developed by Edwin Southern in 1997. Northern Blatt, which is, which is for RNA, was just named the opposite of Southern Blatt because of because it's DNA. So it's just like a joke or something. So it was it was created by James Allen and George Stark. And Western blot for proteins was developed by George Stark, and it uses antivirus to locate proteins. Uh, okay, I was just to Western blot and since summer and basically the same. So act for actrophrases, you would use so the changes of DNA in the and is the same way, just and Western blot is used to study proteins in the job. Yes, Okay, so in center block, the shell is transferred to a nylon membrane as a single-stranded DNA. If your DNA of interest is AAA, the probe you will be, be using is a single-stranded DNA of TTT. And so what will happen is that, so, Right here, you have your gel, and you have your strands, your samples, and say you want to study is AAA, but you don't know that this is AAA. So your probe will be TTT, and when you insert it into the gel, it will only bind to TTT, and the TTT will usually be um, dyed, and so when you look through it through the x-ray, you'll just see this light up, and so that's how you will identify your DNA. Okay, for Western blot, proteins are transferred into a nitrocellulous membrane. If your pro protein of interest is gamma tubing, you would use a gamma tubing antibody. And again, it would be the same way. So you would have your nitrocellulous membrane right here with all your samples. And you want the gamma, so you don't know which one it is, so you insert your antibody gamma. And it will usually be dyed. And it will attach to the gamma part of the molecule. And then again, when you study it under the x-ray, this is the part that will shine. And you'll be able to remove it, both parts, for further analysis or tests. So that's basically a way of identification. Oh, I dropped. Oh. So this is basically another Western blot example. So your protein of interest is this antigen right here, and these two are are ones that you don't want, but you're not sure which one you want. So they would usually use an antibody that goes with this protein, and when they attach, HR, or HRP would be attached to it, and it would make them light up when illuminated. So it's just detected by film. So basically, this is just a way you use the antibody to attach to the protein, so then you could see it through X-ray, and you could remove it and further analyze. Okay. Why is gel electrophoresis important? It, gel electrophoresis is important because it analyzes molecules through their charge, size, and conformation. And it is also used to purify samples before they, they go into further investigation or other processes such as mass spectrometry, PCR, forensics, cloning, genetic fingerprinting, diagnosis, DNA sequencing, or immunoblotting for further characterization. So without gel electrophoresis, you wouldn't be able to analyze any of these molecules or even start even to purify to do these other experiments. So without it, you can't do any of these. So that's why it's really important. So citations and acknowledgments. I would like to thank the Howard Hughes Medical Institute for funding, our instructor Ong, Ms. Ray, who's not here. I don't know why. Okay. <laughs> yeah, she did. Uh, my workshop class and your